Hello and welcome to my Management 371 Week 5 Critical Thinking Presentation. This week's, what, this week's lesson was on communication. The first question asked is how would I assess communications within the organization of my selected and effective leader for my research project and give examples of good and poor communications within that leader's organization. Martin Shkreli is the ineffective leader that I chose for my research project. I would assess the communications within Turing Pharmaceuticals as ineffective because they allowed Shkreli to raise the prices of Daraprim by over 5,000%. In fact, they supported it by saying that when you are the sole manufacturer of the product, you can do whatever you want with the price. What kind of message are you sending out to the public with a statement like that? Martin Shkreli is currently serving a sentence for securities fraud, which is unrelated to Turing Pharmaceuticals. Next, I am asked to evaluate three parts of the message receiving process. The first part is listening. This is a very important part. That is why it is imperative to pay attention, avoid distractions, stay tuned in, hold off on making assumptions, and watch for nonverbal cues such as body languages and eye contact. The next step is to analyze. Think about the message that you just listened to. This is the time for questions to help you gain understanding. The last step is checking understanding. Repeat the message back in your own words and still watch for nonverbal cues. All these steps will help you become a better listener. Next, I will evaluate two common approaches to getting feedback to tell you why they don't work. The first common approach is to send the entire message and then assume that the message has been conveyed with multiple or with mutual understanding without getting any feedback. This does not work for obvious reasons. You're not asking for feedback. The other, uh, the other approach is asking if anyone has questions after being delivered an entire message. When managers do that, they do not get any questions. They assume that there is full understanding. Even under circumstances when questions are asked, there may still be a lack of understanding. It is important for the recipients of your message to have time to reflect on the message. Being asked for questions immediately after the message delivery is stressful. Asking any question might be misconstrued as not paying attention or lacking enough intelligence to fully understand. I would deliver the message first and ask my followers to ponder that message, then ask me questions privately via email or face-to-face -face, or have a follow-up meeting within a few days but I would also ask to hear back from each and every one of them to make sure they understand. Next, I am asked my opinion if a leader can maintain personal friendships with some members of his or her work group or team without creating the perception of in-groups in his or her work unit. My current supervisor used to head up a motorcycle riding group made up of coworkers before he earned the promotion to supervisor. He and the group would take weekend rides and even had t-shirts made for the group. After becoming supervisor over a few of the members, he disbanded the group, and I can see why. I was not part of that group, and I remember having feelings of possibly being on the outside. I was worried that his friends would get all the good assignments and be shown favoritism. This, was, however, was not the case. He disbanded the group, but it was unclear if he did it on his own volition or if he was directed to do so by higher-ups. Regardless, I feel that a manager can have personal relations with their subordinates, but there must be a line of demarcation. The leader-follower friendship should probably stay in the workplace. That means little to no social interactions outside of the workplace. Even if a leader maintained a perfect leader-follower relationship inside the workplace and socialized with the select few outside the workplace, perception is everything. It is perceived that the leader has his, his or her favorites and creates perceived in and out groups. Next, I am asked what a leader should do to dispel any notion or misconception that there are in groups and out groups in his or her work unit. The obvious answer is to treat everyone the same but it is much more nuanced than that. Not every follower has the exact same skill set. Some are more experienced and reliable, and some are less experienced or lack the skills necessary to accomplish the tasks. Dyadic relationships are built over time. When I was a crew manager, 
I would assign my most experienced to work with the less experienced, much in the same way a master takes on an apprentice. Even still, that was more nuanced than it seems. I had to evaluate the personality types of each employee to pair them up based on their compatibilities. It was a lot of work and it was exhausting, but I would say that it was successful. My group was always ahead of the curve when it came to the schedule. We were always the first ones done with all of our work. My followers were harmonious with each other, so much that most of them are still friends even to this day, 14 years later. Having in and out groups is not beneficial for the organization. In groups may feel very satisfied with their jobs and output more productivity, but the group may feel disenfranchised, the out group may feel disenfranchised and are likely to produce less. Possibly they are more likely to actively recruit other followers against you. Finally, I am asked what I would say to those who argue that tactics used by followers to get noticed by their leaders, such as impression management, ingratiation, and self-promotion, are shameful and self-serving and should be avoided. I would say that the precedent for this kind of behavior is set by the leader. If the leader reacts positively to this type of behavior, then it will run rampant within the organization. The best advice I can give for the leader is to be non-reactionary to these type of traits. Do not give a response. Instead, recognize and reward those who go above and beyond or those who have prefer or those who behave a preferred way. In my opinion, the best way for a leader to develop a high quality leader member exchange is to meet every follower on the level. And what I mean by meeting them on the level is trying to see things from their perspective. Try to gain an understanding of the challenges they face every day and use your position of authority to help alleviate some of those challenges. There's nothing more demotivating to me than witnessing a leader roll over on their followers. I would rather have my leader go to bat for me where it matters than have one that just sings empty praises. That is all for this week's presentation. Until next time, thank you.